If you want an electric car, but you're like me and you don't have any money, then what I suggest you do is find a wrecked Nissan Leaf. This here is a 2014 year model. And I'm going to take out all the parts and put them in a car that is not wrecked. And I'm, I'm going to do that conversion in a later video. In this video, I'm just going to take out all the parts and show you how to do it. And I'm going to do it safely, I promise. So watch and stay tuned. Yeah, so this thing's pretty well wrecked, as you can see. Um, but I think the charging ports are operable. Now, I've already removed some of the components, like the CV axles and the brake discs and I'm gonna start working on removing the batteries the motor the inverter the charger throttle cable the heating core oh boy let's get started it says it's at 65 percent it is about one o'clock now we'll see what it's at in a few hours okay now while that is charging I'm gonna work on getting it high enough to uh, get the battery out from underneath because I don't have a car lift. So I'm gonna use this uh, extremely sturdy bench I built a couple years ago. A little bit unconventional, I think a little bit creative. Obviously safety is a huge concern. Uh, let's see how I can get it, get it up there. I need to get up there about 20 inches. It's a lot of clearance I need. Let's try it out. That was a little scary. Fell off those blocks, so we're gonna have to start over. brace off and there now it's on this thing is really sturdy now hello so it's not going anywhere okay it's a little bit unconventional but it's up here really solid I'm using a, uh, a bench that I built a long time ago I'm gonna have just barely enough clearance because I measured that I need 20 inches and then exactly 20 inches is what I have. All right, before I pull all the parts out of here, I gotta do one thing. I gotta put the parking actuator of the uh, gearbox into neutral because it wants to be in park. So I'm gonna turn the car on. I got a battery in there. I'm gonna put the key right here. Wants my foot down on the brake. Try again. There we go. Okay, now we gotta put it in to neutral. Still in park. Okay. I hate this thing. This is the stupidest thing. Okay, I think it wants my foot on the brake again. There. It's in neutral. Now I'm gonna come over here. Here's the parking thingy majigger up here. It's like a little motor. I'm just gonna disconnect it and then it'll stay in neutral. All right, just got it out. Got it unplugged here. So now I'm gonna put it off 
Turn it off and see what happens. Okay, now it says when parked, apply a parking brake. So I, th I fixed it. <laughs> By fixing it, I broke it. So it is not happy about that. That's good. Now we have to pull this thing. Just need to pull this service disconnect plug and then it will be safe to work on. Okay, I had to pry up on here like this. That brought it up. It's not very intuitive. It's not very obvious. <clears throat> that doesn't fit. I don't want to break it. I do not break anything. Eat a two week old unrefrigerated pie. Don't waste your time. Woo! Jesus Christ. This motherfucker did not want to come off easily. Got to get a pry bar, apparently. All right, motherfucker. Don't die, don't die. Don't die. There. Now it is safe. Alright, let's take a look at the battery. There it is, there. Here's the connections we're gonna have to remove next. Okay, it's finally time to lower the battery now. I'm gonna use two floor jacks, and I have this cart that I built just for this purpose. And it has some hefty duty wheels on the bottom here. So the plan is to put two jacks under it, jack it up so that the jacks are tight against the battery and the floor, loosen all of the remaining bolts, and then lower the jacks and the battery will then go onto the cart which is tall enough to clear the jacks and it should work out just great.
Okay, I need to work on getting the motor out now, and to do that, I'm going to start cutting everything away that I can. Obviously, I'm going to salvage the charger ports, charger cables, but uh, the rest of it is going to have to get cut off. You might not believe this, but there is still Freon in this system, even after this big collision. This is the high pressure line, so I want to be a little careful, but I want to show you. Oh yeah, there's lots of Freon in there. And I don't know if you knew this, but there's a thing called climate change happening right now. And the problem with refrigerant is that it's uh, like a thousand times the greenhouse warming potential of normal CO2 and if I was to release this pound of refrigerant that's in here that would be equivalent of 73 gallons of gasoline so I'm not sure what I want to do right now no mechanic is gonna come over here and suck it out for me and no residential HVAC technician is gonna to want to touch this okay let me catch you up on what I've done here I've separated the AC compressor from the where it was mounted to the motor and where it was connected the high voltage wires to the PDM and this way I can remove the motor and the AC compressor will stay there and then I can figure out what to do with all the refrigerant at a later time okay back here is the rear motor mount. This one's a biatch to get to. So I'm gonna put a breaker bar on here. It's an 18 millimeter nut. <clears throat> Hold on, there we go. Ta-da! Guys, I just remembered that I forgot to tell you about the uh, CV shafts that I've already removed along with the hubs. And those are just sitting back, sitting back here for now. Sitting under here. So you gotta have those removed too. It makes it a little easier when you're lifting the motor up. There, that should make it a bit easier on me. Never do this in a gravel driveway, this is terrible. Eat a two week old unrefrigerated pie. Thank you. 
God damn it. I'm at the metal recycling yard. They're dropping off the leaf now so they can go back and weigh the tow truck and know how much money they owe me. It won't be very much. But this is a cool place and a cool backdrop to end my video. So I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you want to see what vehicle I put these parts into. Will I put it into my 62 Mercury Comet or will I put it into my 1980 Mercedes Benz? Let me know in the comments what you think I should do. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.